Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we are going to solve this problem, replace O's with X. So given a matrix of size N cross M, where every element is either O or an X, now your target is to replace O's with X that are surrounded by X. Uh, o or a set of O is considered to be surrounded by X if there are X at locations just below, above, left and right. So let's take an example on the iPad. So if you take this example, and if I see this O is not surrounded by X on the top, this O is surrounded by a zero, but this is not surrounded by X. This O is surrounded by O on this, but O on this, but nothing on top. So I can say this is a set of O's, which is surrounded by X on the left, on the bottom, on the right, but nothing on the top. Similarly, these are the set of the zeros, which are surrounded by X on the left, X on the right, nothing on the, uh, nothing on the right, rather X on the left, nothing on the right, nothing on the bottom. But the moment, the moment I say, hey, listen, let's convert this guy to an X. Now, if I take this set of O's on the top, X, on the left, X, on the right, X, on the bottom X. Remember, diagonals are not considered. Just the top, just this are considered. Not diagonals. Thereby, they are surrounded by X on all the four directions. So this set of zeros, I can say these set of zeros are surrounded by X on all the four directions, not diagonals. So thereby, I can convert them to X. I can convert these O's to X. But the moment I see these O's, this is surrounded by X on the left, on the top, but nothing on the right, nothing on the bottom. It is vacant. So thereby, these O's will stay as O's only. So what I can say is, what is the first observation that you figured? If someone is on the boundary, if someone is on the boundary, that is where he cannot be covered. That is very obvious because for this example, like if I just erase this, for this example, there was O's, right? This was the O. Now I know if these O's are somewhere not connected to a boundary, they're bound to be surrounded by X. They're bound to be surrounded by X. Very obvious, right? Because they will be bound to be surrounded by X if they're not connected to the boundary. But if somehow, if somehow, if I convert this X to O, these guys will be surround like these guys will be connected to the boundary. They will be connected to a zero which is on the boundary. Thereby, you cannot convert these set of zeros. So do you get an observation? Do you? So let me uh, give you one more example. So if you see this, they are nowhere connected to a boundary which has a zero. So thereby, they're bound to be surrounded by X. They're bound to be surrounded by X on the top, on the right, on the bottom, on the left, they're bound because they're not connected to a boundary. So this pretty simple observation is, if I change this to an O, you can't say that this set of O's will be surrounded by X completely because there's a boundary gap. And if you take these set of O's, you, you, you have an empty over here, you have an empty over here. This might be surrounded, but this has an empty. So if someone is connected to the boundary, if a set of zeros is connected to a boundary, they cannot be surrounded by X. That is my first observation. A set of X connected to a boundary O, connected to a boundary O, can't be converted. Can't be converted. Yes. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now, let's have some observations. So can I say, if I've observed this, if I observed this, now, which algorithm shall I apply? I just need to go through the connections, go through the connections. So can I say, if this is an O, that's a boundary O, and that is what I'm considering. Anyone that is connected to the boundary, I repeat, anyone that is connected to the boundary in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, they will never be converted to X. They will never ever be converted to X. So I'm like, okay, I can just do simple algorithm which starts from this boundary and goes and connects to all the O's. So probably if I just apply some DFS, you can apply BFS as well. If I apply DFS, 
this is a no. I know this cannot be converted. Then I go to this. This is connected. This also cannot be. This is connected to this. This also cannot be. This is connected to this. This also cannot be. This is connected to this. This also cannot be. So none of them cannot be. None of them cannot be. Remember this. And done. Because this boundary zero is no more connected to this because this is diagonal. So apparently I can say these set of zeros, no matter what you do, since they are connected to this guy, they cannot be converted to an X. Similarly, I can say if I take this boundary and I say, okay, go to this. So these two also cannot be converted to uh, X. Can I say this? I can. Now, if I just go back a couple of steps, okay, since we have done the algorithm. Now, what if I go up across and I say, okay, let's do this X. Let's do this X. Now I know what is the boundary. This is the first O bound, like O boundary. So this is where we have. So if I say go and connect with all those that you're connected with, he will go and say, okay, these zeros. But apart from that, are these zeros touched? No, they are not touched. No, they are not touched. So if they are not touched, what do you say? Please convert them to X. Perfect. So the algorithm is very simple. Start from the boundary zeros. There can be multiples. Remember this, there can be multiples. Start from the boundary zeros and mark them that they will not be converted, that they will not be converted and convert the rest zeros. Convert the remaining, sorry, O's, remaining O's. That's my algorithm. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so let's take this example. We're going to perform a DFS traversal. You can do the BFS traversal as well, as long as you're starting with the boundaries and marking all of those guys who are connected to it. That's absolutely okay. So what I'll do is this is my matrix, right? So I'll create a corresponding visited matrix. Again, you can modify this, but I do not modify the given matrix. I don't modify the given matrix because over here they have clearly stated replace the O's with X. So you just replace those with X and return that you just replace that and return. Apart from that, I will not do any modification to the, to the data. So, so what I'll do is I'll create a corresponding visited matrix now. Okay. So on the left, we have a matrix on the right. We have a visited matrix. Okay. Now what you do is, you know, you need the boundary O's. So you go to all the boundaries and find out the first two. So let's check out boundary. No, 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 O, no, O, no. There is no O on the first row. Let's go on check and the first column. Is there any one on the first column? I see the first column. Yes, there is an O. There is an O. So do one thing. Call the DFS with this guy. Call the DFS with this guy. So what you'll do is, uh, let's quickly write down the row numbers. Zero, this is, and the column numbers. Let's call the DFS from 0, comma, or rather 4, comma, 0. So this is the DFS call. Now you know how the DFS works. DFS 4, 0 will go and mark it as visited. Mark it as visited. Done. DFS of 4, 0 checks the top guy. It's an X. No need to go to an X. Checks the right guy. It's an O. Please go and mark it. Please go and mark it. So you will say, okay, I'll do a DFS for 4, 1. But will there be any subsequent DFS? Like when it comes back, will there be a subsequent year? No, because there is no one on the bottom. There is no one on the left. This one is X and this one is the only O. It just goes to this DFS. So go to the 4, 1. Now when you go to the 4, 1, you again mark it as visited. Now you're standing at 4, 1. You check up. Okay, this is a no. This is an X. No one. Already visited. So you just go to this guy, which is 3, 1. Which is 3, 1. Perfect. Now what will happen is you started here, you went here, you went here. They are three comma one. Please make sure you mark it as visited. Please make sure you mark it as visited. Done. Correct. Next three comma one. Standard three comma one. Up. No. No. Visited. No. So this guy, this guy started from here and it did a DFS and marked this, 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 and then from here. He did not find anyone else to go. So he says no more DFS. Thereby comes back, comes back. Apparently the DFS is over. Apparently the DFS is over. Once the DFS is over, 
I can say these guys are marked. Done. Because this zero was connected to these three guys. So it marked it. These set of zeros cannot be converted. Done. So as of now, I've checked the first row and the first column. Let's check out the last column. In the last column, you have an O, but that's already marked. You have another O that's already marked. So no need to again perform DFS traversals because their connections would have already been marked in the previous traversal. X, X, X. So this done, this done, and this done. We are only left with this guy. We have an X. No. We have an O. Yes. Start from here. While checking, you just get an O. So the moment you got an O, start the DFS from there, which is DFS of 1, 4. So this is an O, which is DFS of 1, 4. Please mark it as visited. Please mark it as visited. The moment you have marked it as visited, done. Now, what is your next step? The next step is very simple. Check out its no, 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 yes, which is DFS of 2, 4. Mark it as visited. Now you go here. Does it have on the right? No. Does it have on the top? Visited. Does it have on the right? No. Does it have on the bottom? No. It does not have. It does not do any further traversal. This is also visited. So apparently, this zero is visited and this zero is visited because these set of O's were connected to the boundaries. You can't say diagonal. So apparently, this is done. You started the DFS done. Do we have a... But this is already visited. No need. X, X. So I have traversed from all the boundaries and marked the corresponding set of zeros that cannot be converted. The corresponding set of zeros that cannot be converted. Job done. Traversals done for all the boundary guys. Next step. Zero. Is it zero? That means none of the boundary visited it. So this can be converted to an X. Zero. Zero. X. Zero. Zero. X. Zero. One. Someone visited from the boundary. Someone visited from the boundary. Keep it as O. Zero. Zero. X. No one visited it from the boundary. Zero. One. Someone visited from the boundary. Zero. Someone visited from the boundary. Zero. Someone visited from the boundary. Zero. Someone visited from the boundary. So if someone did not visit it from the boundary, you convert it into an X. Otherwise, you do not. This is as simple as it can get. So if I break down the algorithm, it's very simple. From boundary, find O's and travels and connect or travels and mark all O's connected to it. And travels and mark all O's or zeros, whatever, connected to it. Okay, so let's quickly check out the code. So guys, as usual, I'll be coding the C++ and the Java code is on the left. So we are given N, M and a character vector. So what do you need to do? You need to basically convert it. So what is the first step? You need a visited one. So please create a visited one. That's the first thing you'll need. N cross vector of int M cross zero. So visited are marked as zeros. What's the next thing that you need? You need to traverse the first row, first column, and the first and the last row and the last column. So let's traverse on the first row, which is so if I traverse on the first row, you will have to go to every column. So so I can say this is uh traverse rows. Traverse first row and last row. This will be doing it. Okay. So can I say that if this is unvisited, which is the first row means zero row, and the column is J. This is the first row. And if I say the last row, it means N minus one and J, the column. So this is for first row. And this is for the last row. Perfect. Very simple because if I take you back, this is zero, only this changes, this changes, this changes, this changes. So this is your J. And the zero stays constant for the first row. And if you look at for the last row, this is constant and this changes. That is what I have written, right? So this is the first row. If it is not visited and it is a zero, very important. It is a, oh rather, <laughs> I've been messing it up. That's been very bad. That's fine. Uh, if of O, 
and J. But if it is a O, can you go and say, can you please call this DFS row I, comma J with the visited matrix and the matrix? We'll write the DFS afterwards. Similarly, can I say the same thing? If it is having N minus one and J equal to equal to an O, I say DFS of N minus one. By the way, this will not be I, comma J, this will be zero, comma J. N minus one, J visited matrix. Perfect. Done. That will be for the first one, the first column. Can I do a similar thing for the last row and last column? Sorry, a first column and the last column. I can. I can write something like this. And I know the first column will be something like this. If not visited of what I and the first column will always have zero. And and matrix of I and this is equal to equal to O. Then you do a DFS traversal for I comma O comma visited comma matrix. Perfect. And similarly, can I say if not visited, the last column is going to be M minus one and and matrix of I and M minus one is going to be equal to equal to O. Then you do a DFS call for this guy, which is I comma M minus one and a visited and a matrix. Perfect. So this is how you will do it. And we'll write the DFS call slowly. After that, what we will do is you will go for the entire stuff. Yes. I mean, something like this. You'll go for the entire stuff and you'll say if this guy is not visited and this guy is still a O, that means you were not touched by anyone in the boundary. So can you please convert yourself into an X? And once you have, can you return the same matrix? Right? That is something which you have done. I, I solely did change the matrix because it was saying replace O's with X. If it would have said me uh, something else, then I would have not tampered with the matrix. Okay. So this is done. Now you just need to write the DFS. So please write the DFS. So it's very simple. You say private void DFS. You have the row, you have the column, and you have the visitor. So now the moment you reach the row column, please make sure you mark it because they are getting attached. So once you have marked, so once you have visited this guy, what's your task? Check for top, right, bottom and left. So how do you check? I think everyone now remembers that, isn't it? We have been doing that throughout. So if you are standing at a row column, you need to check the top, which is row minus one column. You need to check the bottom, which is row plus one column. You need to check the right, which is row comma column plus one. You need to check the left, which is row comma column minus one. So apparently minus one plus zero, minus one plus zero, plus one plus zero. That is the delta row that will happen. In my previous videos, I've already told you this. This is plus zero. This will be plus one, plus zero, minus one. So this is the delta row and delta column, right? So what you can do is you can probably declare it uh, over here, the delta rows, or you can declare it globally. That is your choice. I'll leave that on you. So this will be the delta row and delta column. And this will be the delta column, which will be something like zero comma one comma zero comma minus one. Perfect. So you can pass this on over here, but a lot of, I don't feel like passing these many parameters, but it's Okay, so passed on this and now you just need to take it over here, which is delta row. And this is going to be delta column. Perfect. Now, you know, there are four neighbors, which is in this way. So go into the four neighbors. Now you just need to check if they are not visited previously. So create the new neighbor. So new neighbor will be row plus del row of I. The new column will be column plus del column of I. Perfect. Now, what is the next thing that you'll do? You will say if the firstly, please check for validity. New row has to be, uh, by the way, you need to also carry the NM. Oh, that's a lot of things. Let's do one thing. Let's uh, figure out NM over here. Because I need to change a lot of places, which I am not fond of as of now. So yeah, done. So you can say if this is greater than or equal to zero at the same time, 
this n row is lesser than e lesser than n at the same time n column is greater than or equal to zero at the same time n column is also lesser than m and at the same time these are not visited n row and n column and at the same time the matrix also has to give you something like n o oh, if all of these sat all of these satisfy what you will do is you will say okay we can call the tfs for the n row n column with a visited with a matrix with a del row and a del column Perfect. so just make sure these are all capital o's not zeros my bad Okay, so once you've converted these, I think we are pretty much uh, okay and we can now do a comp. So let's analyze the time complexity and space complexity. So this is simple like we go of n uh, because you're traversing for all the boundary of our rows, boundary columns. So this is b go of n, this is another b go of n. But at the end of the day, how many times will this DFS be called? Assume you have all the matrix. Let's take a case where you have something like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay. You have a matrix like this. And you start with the first guy, and then you call a DFS. The DFS will go like this, 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 and mark everyone at a single instance. So it will be traversing everyone at the worst case. But once this DFS call has been started from here, it will mark everyone. And when you start the next DFS call, it will never go. It will never go. So can I say the DFS in total will run for B go of N cross M cells into four for four directions. That is obvious. And plus there will be uh, running, they, you're running like the loop for boundaries couple of times. So I can narrate it to almost near about N cross M. I can narrate the time complexity to near about N cross M. And if I ask you uh, the space complexity, yeah, we're definitely using something like visited del rows, so n cross m. And uh, if you're performing a DFS at this case, the worst auxiliary will also be n cross m because you'll go, 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 go. So you'll completely go into the depth. So the space complexity is also near about n cross m. In almost all these problems that we are solving, you'll find n cross m uh, to be very standard in all the matrix problems. So this is how this will be done. So guys, I hope I was able to uh, make you explain this tough problem. So just in case I was able to, please, please hit that like button. And if you are new to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right away. And if you haven't checked out our SD sheet and the DP series, the link is in the description. Please make sure you check it out. And yeah, with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.